Hey everybody, chemistry students, it's Mr. Lavasso with you, and I'd like to cover the notes on the definition of chemistry. And chemistry is uh, the study of matter and how matter changes. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. Mass is an amount of matter. It, essentially, it's weight when we're on Earth. And volume is a measure of three-dimensional space. And whenever matter changes, there's either energy added or energy taken away. And that's the big topic in this lesson. We'll also be looking at some language features of science writing. In particular, how do you find the central theme or the repeating theme in a text? And you do that by looking for a repeated subject or a zigzag, which is when the predicate of one sentence becomes the subject of the next sentence. So those are some of the things we'll be looking at in this uh, lesson. Let's have a look at the um, okay introduction to chemistry, the study of matter and how matter changes. And on the right, you see examples of textbooks that I've gotten some of the information from. So chemistry is important to study any of the sciences. You need chemistry really to understand biology or medicine, geology, astronomy, plant science, environmental science, physics, biochem. They call chemistry the central science because all the other sciences rely on it. The learning targets for this uh, PowerPoint and lecture are one, you should be able to define chemistry, two, recognize, describe, and list examples of the characteristics and properties of matter. Three, explain how an entity's shape causes the characteristics and properties of that entity. Our essential questions, what is chemistry? What is matter and what are the properties of matter? How does matter transform? What is the key universal concept of chemistry? And so on your note catcher, you should have noted down the essential questions. And now on your note catcher, turn to the vocabulary box. And on the left-hand side, you're going to list these six vocabulary words. And then you're either going to put an English synonym, a short phrase or a one word synonym for the word in, uh, in English. Or if you're learning a language, or if you speak another language at home, you could translate the word. So here I've written the study of matter as a synonym for chemistry, and I've translated it into Spanish, chimica, and also into Arabic, chimia. And so you notice that all three languages, the word chemistry is very similar. And our word chemistry does come from the Arabic word. This page is not a numbered uh, box, but what I've done is I've given you a sense of the definitions that you're going to need to know. And this really um, lists, it's like a preview of all the important things to take away from this lesson. Chemistry is a study of matter and matter transformations, the definition of matter, the definition of mass and volume, and the definition of transformation. And over on the right, under the periodic table, know and understand the key concept of chemistry. Form determines function. The electron configuration or the shape of where the electrons fly in an atom gives the element its properties. And when atoms combine to make molecules, the shape of the molecule will determine the chemical and physical properties of the molecule. And so these are questions you should be able to answer. So we'll have a discussion about this question here. How do seedlings become trees? You take a tiny, tiny seedling and it grows into a massive tree, like a redwood tree. Where does the matter come from? And so we'll talk about that. Here are the videos 
of this lesson and you can click on this slide uh, and watch any of the videos that uh, are attached to the lesson for class. Notice that this is the uh, note box one. So on your note catcher, you should be taking the notes for this slide in note box one. So first we see uh, a uh, graphic organizer and this graphic organizer is an analysis of science. Natural science is broken into three parts, biological science, physical science, and earth science. And then each of those are broken up into other parts. For example, physical sciences are broken up into physics and chemistry. And chemistry is the study of matter and its changes. So again, science is about the concept of scale. And here, anytime we're doing any form of analysis, we're using the concept of scale. Chemistry is a natural science. Chemistry is a physical science. Chemistry is the study of matter and how matter changes. Matter is any entity that has mass and volume. Changes to matter require energy. Chemistry studies matter's composition, structure, properties, and transformation from one form of matter to another. Chemistry studies the energy that accompanies the transformation of matter. And I'll leave that for you to go over. And these are kind of the goals um, that I've set for myself in this class. Introduce the foundational topics and concepts of chemistry, focusing on practical chemistry, and also for college readiness. Improve students' critical thinking and decision-making skills through increased science literacy and math skills associated with chemistry. And if you haven't taken enough notes on this page yet, you can always answer this question. What are your goals for this chemistry class? And I would like to discuss that with you in class. So notice that this box does, is not a numbered box, but I think it's an important place to begin. And this is really what is in the universe. And the universe begins with a singularity and what has become known as the Big Bang, which is the separation of that singularity, the expansion of matter in, into volume and time, and the bits of dust gathered together into stars, and those stars exploding. So there's really two things in the universe, energy and matter. And inside of the stars and sun, there are nuclear reactions going on. And the first 26 elements are made by these as exhaust from the stars and the sun burning. The elements after number 26 from 27 on are made in supernovas, which are explosions of stars. So energy comes as radiant energy, like sunlight, like the light that we can see, but there's the entire electromagnetic spectrum from radio waves to gamma radiation. Energy can be in reserve, which is called potential energy and chemical energy. For example, the food that you eat has energy in it. And so your body can extract that chemical energy. So that energy is in reserve, it's potential energy different forms of fuel and food are examples. Kinetic energy is active energy. Matter is made of subatomic particles. And those subatomic particles join together to make atoms. And the different kinds of atoms, which is determined by the number of protons, make elements. Elements are defined unique forms of matter that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. Elements can join together to make compounds, and different compounds can be unevenly or evenly mixed into mixtures, but mixtures have no defined chemical compound. Einstein says E equals mc squared. And what that means is that energy E equals mass or matter times a very big number, the speed of light squared. So energy equals matter. So matter is ultimately a form of energy. And in the sun, energy 
turns and in the stars, energy turns into matter. That's what radioactivity does. The history of chemistry. So this is note box two. Chemistry is a modern science that has its root in ancient China and the Islamic culture. Modern chemistry that we will study comes from an old pseudoscience named after the Arabic word alchemy. Alchemy came to Europe after the Crusades and with the early Renaissance merchants. Alchemists, people who studied alchemy, were trying to turn common metals like copper or iron into gold. And they were hoping to discover magical potions that could make people live forever. And there's a picture of an alchemist, a European alchemist. Let's look at the um, language structure that we see in this paragraph. So the first subject is chemistry. And the first uh, a piece of information about chemistry is that it's a modern science. That's in the predicate. Notice how the two ideas of chemistry and a modern science were brought down to become the subject of the second sentence. So there's both a ziggity or repeating the subject and a zigzag there. So the next subject is modern chemistry and part of the predicate in that sentence is alchemy, the Arabic word alchemy. And notice how alchemy is brought down and it becomes the subject of the next sentence and how alchemy then is brought down as the subject of the last sentence where we change alchemy into alchemists, the people who are studied alchemy. The very common pattern, the very common pattern, the zigzag and the ziggity, two very important ways to understand science writing. So we can just say from looking at this, if we want to quickly summarize this page, we can say that it's about chemistry and alchemy. Those are the words that were zigzagged or all, those are the subjects that were repeated. History of chemistry part two, same note box. Modern chemistry begins with the scientific revolution which happened between 1540 and 1690 and the Enlightenment, which happened between 1690 and 1780. So essentially from 1540 to 1780, um, with the birth of the Enlightenment or the age of reason, chemistry begins. On the right, we see another chemist, another alchemist doing his work. The scientific revolution encouraged belief in observable facts over magic and superstition. Reason was valued over authority. The Enlightenment encouraged society to be ordered on scientific principles. In 1661, the English scientist Robert Boyle published The Skeptical Chemist, which introduced a new word, chemistry, to English and proposed a new definition for elements. And on the right, we see Robert Boyle with his book, The Skeptical Chemist. Boyle redefined elements from the Greek idea of earth, air, fire, and water to the modern definition, elements are substances which cannot be decomposed into simpler substances. In 1789, the Lavoisiers discovered the law of conservation of mass. And on the right, we see Mr. and Mrs. Lavoisier. His name was Antoine Laurent Lavoisier, and her name is Marie. They were actually a team of scientists. She uh, was an equal partner in his scientific work. She translated books from German and English into French so that he could uh, read the current scientific works. She also learned how to draw so that she could um, draw the experiments out as he wrote them up. The Lavoisier's conclusion was that mass is neither gained nor lost in a chemical reaction. This is known as the law of conservation of mass. What that means is in a normal chemical reaction, the weight or the mass of what you begin with in the chemical reaction equals the weight or the mass of what you finish with in a chemical reaction. In 1808, John Dalton proposed 
a modern theory of atoms based on observation and mathematical reasoning. Prior to John Dalton in 1808, atoms were believed to be indivisible, tiny particles or geometric shapes, and that came from the Greek philosopher Democritus. John Dalton proposed the modern theory of atoms based on his observations of chemical reactions, the weather, and a study of basic mathematical principles. And there's a video that you can watch. Slide three, note box three, why we study chemistry. Understanding chemistry is essential for an understanding of many sciences. I talked about that at the beginning. Chemistry teaches us the fundamental models that help us understand the topics and concepts of our natural world, of how our natural world works. Chemistry allows us to see how the atomic and nuclear and the, the atomic and molecular level of scale causes the conditions of nature that we commonly observe at our level of scale. Chemistry teaches us how to think critically and solve scientific and technical problems. Note box four. Chemists study the composition of matter and matters and the properties of matter and matter's transformations. Matter is any entity or substance with both mass and volume. And um, mass divided by volume equals density. It is of this per that problem. Grams per centimeter cubed, grams per milliliter. It is the stuff matter. It is the stuff that is in the universe. Matter is composed of atoms, ions, and molecules. The transformation of matter requires energy given or taken from matter. Matter is classified according to its properties. There are two sets of properties. A physical property can be observed without changing the identity of the substance, such as color, temperature, density. A chemical property describes the change of a substance to form other substances, flammability, biodegradability. So physical properties are things that, that don't change the nature. For example, uh, how easily something freezes is a physical property. How well something uh, is destroyed by an acid or a base is a chemical property. Note box five. Notice the uh, picture on the right. We have chemical and physical changes, examples. Make sure you study that picture. Energy is always involved when physical or chemical changes occur to matter. Energy can be in various forms, such as heat and light. And when you do a chemical experiments or chemical, when you make chemical reactions happen, you can often feel the heat or you can feel something get cooler and you can often see flame or light. Energy can be absorbed or released in a, in a change. It is not destroyed or created. So energy is also, like mass, is not created or destroyed, and that's called the law of conservation of energy. And here's an example. If you take um, iron, I mean, uh, mercury oxide, and heat it, it transforms into pure oxygen and pure mercury, liquid mercury. So let's use this graphic organizer as an analysis of matter. Matter has different phases, such as solid, liquid, and gas. Matter can be broken into two types, mixtures. Mixtures do not have a chemical formula and pure substances. Pure substances have a constant composition or a chemical formula. Pure substances are, called, are also called chemicals. Pure substances come in two forms, elements, which you can find on the periodic table, and compounds. Compounds are mixes, mixes of different amounts of elements chemically combined together. Mixtures have two, two types, heterogeneous, which means things are evenly mixed. If you take a uh, 
teaspoon of sugar and stir it into a glass of tea, the amount of sugar at the top is equal to the amount of sugar at the bottom, unless you really overfill it and make it settle. The amount of oxygen in the air is evenly mixed. Oops, I screwed that up, didn't I? Heterogeneous means uh, it's unevenly mixed. Homogeneous means it's evenly mixed. My, I apologize. I just got talking rather than thinking. Homogeneous uh, mixtures are evenly mixed. Homogeneous mixtures are things like the air has the same amount of oxygen wherever you breathe. If you take a teaspoon of sugar and mix it into hot tea, the sugar will be evenly spread out through all the cup of tea. Heterogeneous mixtures are uneven mixtures. And those would be things like um, uh, a salad dressing or um, Uh, if you have a if you have a bag of nuts and bolts or a bowl of collection of old nuts and bolts, they're unevenly mixed. So matter can be divided into two categories: mixtures, variable composition. There are two types of mixtures: homogeneous mixtures, evenly mixed; heterogeneous mixtures, things unevenly mixed. Pure substances, aka chemicals, constant composition. Always, if you, if you have water in America, it's H2O. If you have water in Kampala, Uganda, you have H2O. If you have water in Buenos Aires, it's H2O. What's more, at any time, if you go back to when the dinosaurs lived, if you have water, you have H2O. If you go 10,000 years into the future, water will still be H2O. It's a constant composition that makes water. There are two pure substances that come as elements, like the O2 of oxygen in the air and compounds like water, H2O. And there's another analysis. Chemical and physical properties of matter, box number seven. Please study the graphic there on the right. Physical property can be seen and measured without changing the identity or composition of the substance. So if I, if I measure something, it doesn't change the chemical or has nothing to do with the chemical formula. The, amount, the volume, the amount of space something takes up has nothing to do with, um, the, chem with, with the chemical properties. The weight of the mass has nothing to do with the chemical. It's based completely on the physical properties of matter. Mass, density, boiling and melting points, ability to conduct electricity, these are all physical properties. And make sure you study this picture. Chemical properties. The chemical property describes the ability of a substance to change identity into another substance. How easily is it that, this, that a chemical can transform into another chemical. Those are the chemical properties. Examples include flammability. How easy can it catch on fire? Biodegradable. If I leave it out in nature, how long is it going to take for it to break down into its component parts, usually by bacteria and fungus interacting with it? How reactive is it to acids? What is its pH? How toxic is it to living things? These are all examples of chemical properties. And the last slide uh, uh, for box number, uh, for a box number, which is eight, form determines function. Form determines function means that an entity's shape causes the characteristics and properties of the entity. For example, a backpack and a jacket. A backpack and a jacket have about the same amount of cloth in them. However, they're stitched differently. And so the, if you stitch a jacket, you can't carry books in it. And if you stitch a backpack, you can't wear it to stay dry when it rains. The form determines the function of these pieces of cloth. Each element on the PR table 
has a unique chemical and physical property, has unique chemical and physical properties. Those properties are caused by the element's atomic structure. So the shape of where the electrons are gives the atomic or gives the chemical and physical properties of each of the different elements. Similarly, molecules have distinct shapes that cause their properties. For example, water. Water has that unique ability to stick to things. And that's caused by one side of the molecule being slightly negative and the other side being slightly positive. And that property, which is called polarity, and the ability to stick to things is called adhesion. And those properties are caused by the shape that the water molecule makes. And the last note slide box is the review. And here it is. Chemistry is a physical science that studies matter and matter's transformation. Chemistry is key to understanding all sciences. Physical properties of matter describe a substance. Chemical properties of matter describe how a substance can transform into a new substance. Chemical change is joining, separating, or rearranging atoms into new substances with new properties. Physical changes of matter does not change the nature or chemical formula of a substance. The form or structure of atoms and molecules produce the properties of matter that we experience at our level of scale. Form determines function. And our last discussion question in class will be, what is fire? What happens when something burns? So my friends, I look forward to seeing you in class. I'm so grateful to be your teacher. And this is our lesson on the definition of chemistry.